Hi friends, myself Dr. Sonu Pawar and uh, today I am starting up uh, discussion of uh, Jipmer uh, questions for, which have come for the microbiology and obviously I could not able to get all the options correctly uh, from the student recall but uh, the basic aim of ours is uh, the topics which I have come and uh, like uh, to revise them up well. Okay, so let's start up uh, with the first question. One of the questions uh, which has been told by the students have come is that uh, they have asked uh, about a recently identified Canada which have caused number of outbreaks recently. And uh, these were uh, the options which were created by me, obviously. So one is uh, like Canada Lusitania, one is Canada Paracelosis, one is Canada Dublinensis and one is Canada Auris. So all these are non candida albicans that you know already. Okay. And answer to this question particular one is candida auris. Okay. And if you read up a regular newspaper and all, you must have heard of this particular candida auris. And this candida auris uh, like was in the Times of India and in the news and it was caused number of outbreaks up. Okay. So uh, we'll talk uh, something about all of them. Uh, important points obviously. So first of all, uh, regarding the candida auris. So Canada Auris, uh, like first of all, you need to remember that uh, when it is being discovered up. Canada Auris is uh, not recently discovered up, but uh, it was in the news causing a lot of outbreaks and all. It was discovered up, firstly reported up, in fact, in the Japan in 2009. But the problem of this particular one is three. And what are those three problems? You just focus upon that. It is a multi-drug resistant stuff. Mostly Canada Auris, which are found up, they are found to be what? Multi-drug resistant. Another one is, you can't identify it with a normal standard laboratory methods. Okay, it needs a special identification and all. So because of which, most of the cases of it, they go unidentified. Okay, you cannot able to identify them. They, uh, like uh, Canada Auris causes what? Outbreaks in the healthcare settings. And uh, because of this reason only, it has become so famous. It causes outbreaks in the healthcare settings. So remember these three points. One is uh, multi-drug resistant stuff, difficult to identify with the standard lab methods, and the outbreaks in the healthcare settings. These, this is the reason why it is becoming uh, like a uh, uh, problem for the healthcare because whenever it is being found, it is multi-drug resistant. Firstly, it is not easy to identify it. And another thing is, it causes outbreaks in the healthcare settings. Fine. Now coming to the other options and all, one of the options which you see is Canada Lusitania. This particular uh, is a human pathogen and discovered up there in the 1979. Okay. So this particular one is uh, discovered up in 1979 and uh, this particular one, it is uh, as such not a very like uh, common pathogen. It's an uncommon pathogen and uh, remember this this particular entity is important that some of the isolates are resistant to the amphotericin b and what is the meaning of this particular line the meaning of this particular line is for every non candida albicans nowadays and why is it so because they all have become resistant to most of the antifungal drugs and that's a cause for concern okay so that is what is the candela lusitania after that uh, another non candida albicans is candida paracelosis and uh, it was discovered in Puerto Rico in 1928. It's a way back. And uh, it does not cause much of uh, important diseases and all. Uh, as we know, all the fungus in immunocompromised fellows, they cause much of a problem. So here also, it causes sepsis and wound and tissue infections in immunocompromised people. Right? And the option C, if you see up, that is Canada Dublinensis, which is uh, like everywhere present, cosmopolitan. And uh, basically, regarding this, you just remember up, it is restricted to the oral candidiasis and all. So guys, uh, important here to remember is what? Important here to remember is the names, first of all, just the names. Nobody will be asking up where it is discovered and all that, for sure. Why we are talking about Canada Auris? This you can remember up because it have these particular types of property like it is multi-drug resistant it is difficult to identify with the standard lab methods and it cause what outbreaks in the healthcare settings okay so these are the various things regarding it which you need to remember up and uh, besides this 
I say, like, uh, let's have a recall of uh, some important points regarding the candida. So, we were talking about what non candida albicans, and as you know, all these names are there non candida albicans. Other than that, what are the other names? Like, candida tropicalis is one of the names, one is candida glabrata, okay, one is candida cruzi, one is candida cruzi. And one is uh, this Candida Kefir. And one is Candida Vishwanathi. These are the various non-Candida albicans which you need to remember. Other than that also are there like uh, Candida Guller Monty and all. But these are the important NCA. NCA means what? Non-Candida albicans. Got my point? Now, why we have to remember these uh, like atypical names uh, nowadays? The problem is because they are becoming day by day resistant okay they are becoming what multi drug resistant day by day and as above only you have uh, must have like uh, noticed up this candida auris is found to be multi drug resistant and uh, some of the other candida which we discussed up they all were uh, showing up what drug resistant so that's a major problem so that's why we are concerned about this nc and all okay other than that uh, you know about your famous fungus that is the candida albicans and in the candida albicans you need to remember one thing that as such it's a common fungal disease in humans okay and uh, it causes what obviously candida albicans causes candidiasis and all as you know and uh, it is uh, mostly by the candida albicans that's why i'm saying up regarding the candida albicans otherwise nc can also cause it but mostly it is candida albicans and remember regarding this two things one is uh, renal broad phenomena okay and one is chlamydospore formation one is renal broad phenomenon and another one is chlamydospore formation now what is the meaning of renal broad phenomena the meaning of renal broad phenomena is that is the germ tube formation this is termed as what germ tube formation what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is this that uh, suppose you have a culture of candida albicans on the obviously where you do the cultures and all on the sda okay from there you pick up a colony of it and you put it up into the human plasma and after half an hour when you see that particular thing under microscope what you observe you observe certain germ tubes okay like projections okay the projection starts coming out of the candida e cells and this particular projection is termed as what germ tube this is renal broad phenomena whereas the chlamydospore formation this particular formation said to be occurring on what that is on the corn meal agar and corn meal agar is what corn meal agar is a nutrient deficient media and on this nutrient deficient media you can remember up it produces these asexual spores okay it produces this asexual spores on this corn meal agar so that is what is important entities which are being asked again and again that is one is renal broad phenomena and one is chlamydospore formation okay so one thing is this guys you always must be confused up uh, between two things uh, that uh, one is hyphae and what is pseudo hyphae so let me tell you certain differences between hyphae and pseudo hyphae which will cl clear up uh, your confusion regarding this so first of all uh, guys remember this that as the name suggest they are the not the true hyphae so that's why the name is what pseudo hyphae and another thing the other hyphae they are termed as what true hyphae so what is the difference between them so listen up first thing you look out for the septa in the pseudo hyphae the septae they are constricted okay constrictions are present in this whereas there is no constriction and what is constriction constriction is narrowing okay you got this then the another thing is how does the pseudo hyphae grow it grows mostly by the budding okay mostly by the budding this hyphae grows as such uh, budding happens in yeast cells but this pseudo hyphae also buds remember this first thing and in this there is a apical elongation it does not bud out there is a apical elongation here in the case of true hyphae okay 
so basically the major point is that you have to remember up like constrictions are present in the septa here and in this side in the true hyphae there is no constriction okay there is no constriction in the true hyphae whereas in the septa the constriction is present and it particular one grows by what it grows by budding and that particular one grows by what a pical elongation so this particular thing might uh, like uh, remove your confusion regarding the pseudo and true hyphae so basically where you have to see the constriction okay and narrowing if the narrowing is present then that is pseudo hyphae and if that particular thing is uh, having no constriction that particular thing is termed as what true hyphae got my point so these all things you need to remember and uh, guys as you know one question is coming again and again nowadays regarding this beta 13 glucan assay and remember this particular thing is present in the candida cell walls and all it is not used commonly but yes it is nowadays being used for what this particular thing that is the invasive candidiasis for the invasive candidiasis this particular beta 13 glucan assay testing is being done nowadays okay what is the like uh, drug of choice for candida you all know that is the fluconazole which is uh, termed as the drug of choice fluconazole other than that for the invasive candidiasis and all you can use of what you can use of amphotericin b okay for that particular one you can use of amphotericin b okay so this also you need to remember guys one more question here uh, like while going up i will tell you that uh, two fellows are there and you will tell me let uh, this glebereta and cruzi where you have heard them obviously you have heard them where in the nca that is the non candida albicans it is having glebereta and it is having cruzi and they both are intrinsic resistant to the azoles okay and this was another jipmer question last to last year and guys remember this it will come again okay it will come again so you have two things here one is glabrata and one is cruzi and they have what they have intrinsic resistance okay so remember this thing also that uh, which particular nca they having a intrinsic resistant to the azoles and as such remember this point also that in the nca this uh, multi drug resistance is increasing day by day okay so i have given up a uh, few concepts of candida here and all of them uh, definitely the question can come in the starting we discussed regarding the nca uh, like candida oris why it is becoming important nowadays after that we have discovered up uh, like uh, what is uh, the difference between these hyphae and pseudo hyphae one thing and we have discussed regarding the candida albicans also which causes mostly the candidiasis and uh, in that we have discussed up two particular phenomena one is renal broad and one is clavados for formation that is done on corn meal which is a nutrient deficient media and in this particular one we have a germ tube formation and in the last this particular testing is a discussed a beta 13 glucan assay and uh, remember these names also guys candida glabrata and cruzi which are found to be intrinsic resistance to the azoles okay so like this uh, i will be discussing up all those uh, particular uh, like jump my questions one by one and uh, with the discussion in and around it okay thank you